How are you guys doing? We're talking about New Hampshire in this one. I'm mainly going to focus on the Cup Series, and I really kind of just want to talk about out loud about the, I guess, ranking of teams of just kind of where we are this year, you know, kind of because we're halfway uh, through the season. We'll talk about the Xfinity Series as well, but, like, look, man, when there's, like, six guys at 10K and a race that Christopher Bell has literally dominated and a race that I have, like, been wrong. Like, if you, like, when you go back and look at my stuff and when I get frustrated at myself, Christopher Bell at New Hampshire has been, and it has been the, I just don't see it. I, I don't think he wins. I just don't see it happening. And then I get crushed at New Hampshire because I never play Christopher Bell. Like, that is, that, that's what I've done the last, like, two races he's killed in the Xfinity Series. Straight up, I've done live shows. I've done videos. Like, you know what, guys? I just don't see it. I don't know how Christopher Bell wins this. So, like, whether it's like sheer ignorance, whether it's like sheer, I'm just gonna get different. Whatever. I have been like crushed by Bell in the Xfinity series. So, like, we're in the same boat again for the Xfinity series. So, um, that's why I'm gonna talk very little about that because uh, I'm probably gonna not play Bell again and just hopes he has a bad race. Like, I'm I'm honestly tilted at how Xfinity with Christopher Bell has done. Uh, but what I want to talk about is I just, I just want to review very fast. Like when we look at the tracks and I wish I would have done this more also raise your hand. Okay. Raise your hand. If you faded Kyle Larson at Iowa. Okay. All right. Now raise your hand. If you made money at Iowa. So I hope you guys <laughs> had some had some Blaney. I I had so much Hamlin and Truex. I wanted to cry. <laughs> like absolutely different from half of the field right off the bat with no Larson, and I still don't fucking cash. You know, so like shout out to Blaney for 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 killing the field and having the best car at Iowa. And I wish I probably would have been a lot more aggressive on the gateway um, stuff that I had looked at or talked about entering Iowa. And yet again, as we get to New Hampshire. New Hampshire is not a track. I'm looking at how people do at Richmond. I'm not looking at how people do at Phoenix. And it's not only because of the fact that we've gone to Gateway and Iowa just like recently and stuff, which those two in Gateway specifically should line up very well with New Hampshire. And I understand New Hampshire doesn't have as much banking, but like I like to focus on the speed that these cars are, are, are having entering these corners. But when we look at New Hampshire, like, these are the people, and I understand this isn't my fancy, like, highlight and stuff. This is just the driver rating. High, this is just break by driver rating here just because uh, the issue that I have with the short tracks, and now it might be easier to start dividing data points and data sets into different tier, not tiers, but separating them. Because, like, when we look at the 1.5s, we just look at those together. And then when you look at nuances and stuff, like, you look at, who's been well at 1.5s that will line up very well with Michigan, but I don't typically use Michigan for other tracks. It just happens to line up there. Same thing with Pocono. Like I typically keep Pocono data in with the 1.5s because that is lined up very well. But if you want to kind of be more specific, I guess you could combine Michigan and Pocono together. Yes. I know the tracks are like nowhere near the exact same, but like when we're looking at Indy this year, like Indy and Pocono are going to line up very well together. Um, on top of the 1.5s and stuff. But when I'm when I'm looking at the short tracks, the fact I actually enjoy the fact that we now have Iowa, Gateway, and New Hampshire in the same season as I think those tracks are very much correlated to each other. And I think this is a situation where when you're looking at short tracks, you can very easily move them to being in their own groups and almost having more data points. Now, yet again, I don't I don't give a shit about like DFS golf and stuff. But I know a lot of people you know, correlate what type of grass or whatever turf they're using, whatever. Uh, but I I would probably look at it more in that sense. So, like, when we're looking at short tracks like Phoenix, Richmond, you would probably solidify them together, and then and you can choose to include, you know, Bristol and, and Martinsville in that data set as well. But I would include that by itself. And then when we look at the short, flat tracks, okay? When we say short, flat tracks now, uh, this is not an end-all, be-all term, analogy, or, 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 or term that we're using for all of them, okay? Short, flat tracks should be based on speed that they're running, okay? So, like, when I look at short, flat tracks, I think of Gateway, Iowa, and New Hampshire, 
okay? I'm not looking at Martinsville because we're doing like 92 entering the corner and we're running like 35 in the apex, okay? Like we're, we're practically running a drag strip and stopping in the corner, okay? Phoenix is just one big corner from the entry to three to the exit of two. We are just running a, a, like just an arcing mo. We're just, we're just arcing all the way until the back straightaway. Okay, and so when we're looking at the short, flat tracks and stuff, I would look at Gateway, Iowa, and New Hampshire, despite the fact that these have three drastically different bankings. But we're looking at how these cars are rotating. And specifically, the difference that I like to look at between, like, Martinsville and Richmond is the speed that you're able to rotate through Gateway in the corners, which should line up very well with New Hampshire. Now, secondly... Because we, we always kind of run on this point of when we're in the season and you're like, man, you know, them Penske boys are slowly getting better. They weren't good last, they weren't good a couple months ago. It, well, it's not the fact that they weren't good a couple months ago. Penske is where they have been, okay? And I'm saying this to somebody who's like, hey, you know what? Uh, I should probably, I, sh I should have probably played Blaney in Arena, Iowa. I know I mentioned Penske in the preview and stuff like that. Like, I, I just got, like, tunnel vision on, on, oh, my God, a low ownership on tricks, low ownership on Hamlin starting 12th. Uh, let's just go there. Like, that that was that was my own own fault last week. But when we're looking at, like, the schedule, you know, we open at Daytona, Atlanta, practically a wash. Those two weeks don't even matter, okay? Then we go to Vegas, then we go to Phoenix or whatever the schedule is. And then we have, like, the month-and-a-half block of 1.5s and stuff. I mean, you have the all-star race and stuff. But, like, you know, you got Dover, Kansas, Charlotte, uh, blah, 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 blah. All, the, all these tracks during the month of May, okay? So when you're looking at the schedule in the year, like, yeah, Penske hasn't been fast at the 1.5s because that's not where their strong suit has been. That's Or not has been, but, like, that's clearly where they're lacking. We understand that Hendrick is up there at those tracks. We understand that Toyota is up there at those tracks. We're typically seeing those teams have a majority stake in the top 10, top 12 running positions and stuff. We understand that. We're also seeing, or we're running into a situation where the new Dark Horse, at this point it's not new, but Ford was Ford's using a new front end this year, a new car, body rather. And at this point, there's been speculations of, you know, drivers are saying, oh, you know, it offers more downforce, oh, whatever, whatever. But we're clearly seeing that Ford is having much better run, running, I was going to say running position, having much better runs at these, I'm not saying downforce isn't important, okay? If anything, it's probably more important at tracks that are flat. But I'm saying at tracks that aren't as high speed as the other, or as the main intermediate tracks that we're running at, okay? And so when we look at this week in New Hampshire, Okay, we understand that Trix, yes, he's been fast as well. Yes, you know, Trix, it's like, oh my God, how is Trix going to lose this race to New Hampshire? Or how is Toyota not going to run there? But what I'm seeing here, and just looking back at these two races here, like when we look at where, you know, Blaney is, when we look at where Logano is, like when we look at where Brad is, like we're seeing a lot of, I mean, Cindric, I'm going to say Cindric disappointed at Iowa, which he did. Um, but I would not be shocked again. I mean, even Barry. I mean, Barry, like, kind of shocked the world last week at staying, you know, running top five pretty much the entire time at Iowa. And my, my keyboard died. Big, big rip. We're going to continue on. Um, but when we're looking at the cars that are fast currently right now, which, in you know, in the month of June, I would say that data is very correlated with each other. It's not because it's what well, it is because it's recent, but it's mainly because the tracks not do not it's the tracks not due to like recent form over the last like month and a half because a month ago in the month of may we were at completely different racetracks okay it, it's not even apples to oranges now the reason i'm bringing this up is because it always it's always interesting in terms of dfs because when you look at salary and when you look at where ownership is going and where people are playing i guarantee you at this point where they're like man you know what's wrong with hendrick What's wrong with Joe Gibbs? Like, nothing's wrong with those teams, okay? Larson was going to stop the field at Iowa, and then he got involved in a wreck, he got taken out, you know. And he didn't have a fantastic time at Gateway because he got taken out by Kyle Busch at Gateway, you know. We run to two races to where, you know, a guy that has that has a real chance of, of competing with the field is taken out, so it opens it up 
again, so I don't see Larson struggling at these tracks. He just ran to bad luck and stuff. You could you could argue that his run at, at Gateway wasn't nearly as good as the one at Iowa, but still, we understand that Larson's going to be there. But when we look at Iowa, like, there's a real case to be made, at least in my opinion, that the Fords are certainly better at these tracks than the intermediates that we've been at this year. And... If you look at it in that sense, these are probably the better chances for the Fords to, I was going to say compete and win, because clearly that's the case. But, like, Blaney specifically, not because he won at Iowa, although that is good, but typically I don't look at the finish position. But when we look at, like, when we look at Iowa last weekend, it was Larson by himself, and then Blaney by himself, and then the rest of the field, okay? So when we lost Larson, it's still, you know, Larson was what was one A, and then Blaney was like two A, and then everybody else is like three, but like way, way, way down. Like it was the two horse race between between Larson and Blaney. And when we look at where like Pinsky is getting and where Blaney is getting specifically, like I, I'm I'm very curious on what they end up doing at New Hampshire. I'm very curious on how fast Pinsky is at New Hampshire. If we see, or at least for me, you know, speaking out loud of like, hey, Brandon, I might want to. You know, pay attention and play these idiots. Uh, let me make sure this notification was not anything wildly important. It's not. Um, I think Pinsky has a real chance, as I thought last week in Iowa, to compete and probably be better than what even what we would expect them to be at short tracks. And what I mean by that is, like, clearly they're not competing at the 1.5s. When we look at what their area of track that they should perform at they're they're I, they're Penske and the Fords are performing better at the short flat tracks and probably what we would have initially thought of, even if we did expect them to do better at these tracks. Like, uh, so with that said, not that purposely trying to be different. Cause as I said, like with the, with the bell thing at the Xfinity, I've done a lot of times where I'm like, I just don't see it. Like, and then I like fuck up and you know, lose or whatever, but real chance, like, I'm concerned about Joe Gibbs entering the Iowa race. Okay. I have not seen now. Yes. Hamlin had the third best car gateway, but I have not seen the speed that we probably should have seen out of Truex at both of these races. We haven't seen the speed that I probably would have wanted to see out of Hamlin at these two races. Okay. Yes. Bell is, you know, clearly looking like the best Joe Gibbs car at the moment. Like he he's the one that I would probably be looking at versus Hamlin versus uh, Truex. Like I I would lean more to Chris Bell, and especially if he goes out and you know murders the field Saturday. Like Bell should probably be the favorite of the Joe Gibbs cars. Okay, not Truex, not Hamlin. Okay, at least that's where my thoughts are. Um, other things that I was gonna say, kind of leaning towards where the hierarchy of teams are, not necessarily. Um, folks in up top, but like when we look at teams like Rick Ware, yet again, a Ford back team. When we look at front row, Ford back team, certainly RFK and stuff like that. But we're seeing that like the Fords, yes, they might not have the numbers, but they're performing better. Now, is that relative to what Ford is doing? Is that relative to what the team is doing? Related to what the teams are doing? But like Rick Ware is no longer like the back marker team. Now, we knew that going in, but like. Both cars, both both drivers and the team is very much a mid-pack team now, okay? We understand that Front Row Motorsports is very much a mid-pack team in terms of, like, that's by the— and when I say mid-pack, anywhere from 18th to 22nd. Like, that's where those cars line into. That's where Rick Ware lines into, okay? So who's, who's heading towards the bottom of, like, the new— who's the shitters? Who's the bad guys in the back? You know, you got to think it's Spire, you know? And even then, it's still impressive seeing what Josefar is able to wield in those things. But LaJoy and Zane Smith are clearly probably the slowest cars in the pack, or in the team, in the field, rather. Um, Colleague is there as well. Like, those are the cars that we would probably see. Is this thing back? Okay, cool. My keyboard's working again. But, like, when you look at, like, what Haley's been up to, mid-pack. Great to see. Pretty sure it's Grala. Where are we at, Grala? Pretty sure where ran... Now, ironically, they were the the two course cars at these tracks here, uh, but like what what Haley's been what what Haley has been doing is is wildly impressive. We see Gillen ride mid pack, 
we're seeing McDowell, right McPack, you know, and that's just like, that wasn't me looking at these things. That's just, yeah, they're like running mid-pack cars. Like Haley is very much in play. Gillen should be very much in play. Gillen is, has been in what I would say is probably mispriced and miss under own or miss under own miss, uh, mispriced on DraftKings, and hasn't been owned enough. You know, the guy, especially when he's starting in the back of the field and even when he's starting like in the twenties, Gillen has very much the case to finish in the top 18 and stuff. You know, it's where we look at the back of the field. Like, as I said, you know, we have colleague as like the true back mark. Oh, legacy. I totally forgot about legacy. Oh my God. My God, how slow legacy is. That's, that's insane. Like leg when you look at like, who's the worst teams in NASCAR right now, we all entered the season thinking it was like Stuart Haas. At least for me, I was like, man, real case we made Stuart Haas is the worst team. It's insane how, how, how far they were falling. And they were seeing a resurgence from them, whether that be they're just like not giving a shit because like they don't have a job at this point. I'm surprised they're not just flat out cheating. Although I wouldn't be shocked by that. But um, like we're seeing like a huge, huge uh, kick in the step that SHR has. But when you look at who's falling, who's literally taking over their place now, it's very much legacy. It's very much Spire. Um, it's very much Colleague. And I mean, it, it makes no sense. Like, look, Colleague isn't even here. Like they're taking their their like legit Cup Series caliber driver AJ, and and removing him and like putting him just focusing on the Xfinity Series like that that's insane. And stuff. Um, anyway, I'm not trying to ramble, uh, but I'm just kind of like you know sp- speak it out loud of everything I've been thinking about or like where we're at in terms of like this part in the year. Because you gotta get like, you know, we enter New Hampshire. Oh my God, who's gonna be fast? Martin Truex Jr. Oh my God, Hamlin. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure we can all read stats. I'm, I'm sure we can all just pull stats and understand like who is the favorites entering here. Um, but like, even, even like with Stenhouse, like that's, that's, that's pretty consistent and pretty wildly impressive, you know? Which is good to see. I mean, are we seeing, I mean, outside of like Cindric showing up in, in one of these races, which was Gateway, despite the fact he started up front, like there's really no clear favorites at this point of where these guys are at in terms of up top. Like it's very much Byron Larson, Hamlin, Truex. Their performance is very much even with like Blaney, Bell, Alex Bowman, Ross Chastain. Like there's not huge like peaks and valleys of performance or ex- expected performances between the guys up top, um, which then, at least for me, that tells me I should very much probably dictate it based on pit stall suction, based on Q um, entering these slates this weekend, at least for the Cup Series. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of kind of my thoughts on that. I got to pause this real fast because I just went blank on something else I was going to bring up. I don't think this is the point, but that this is one thing I wanted to bring up. So typically, like with the 1.5s, I have all the, I have all my data that I use on the screen. Whereas one thing I don't like about NASCAR, especially when it gets to tracks like this, is that they're unpredictable based on looking at data points. I guess like hindsight, being like, yeah, of course, you know, Blaney would have done well at Iowa. Bell would have done well at Gateway and stuff, or would have had a good car at Gateway. Um, but like, you know. Blaney runs out of gas at, at Gateway. Bell nearly blows up and stuff like that. But what I have found and why I typically don't use this stuff or have this stuff on the screen for the short tracks is because there's much less uh, correlated data points between the short tracks and where people perform each and every week, uh, which is why, as I said, like I think this is an actual thing we could probably look at and, and probably start combining together of Gateway, Iowa, New Hampshire um, to be its own little group. And then possibly I would really be interested to look at these three races and then look at it or look at Richmond in the fall and see if it correlates any with these three races. Anyway, just speaking out loud in, in that sense. Um, when we look at the Xfinity series and stuff, as I said, six guys in the 10 K range this week, Bell is a huge favorite entering the race. Um, ownership is probably going to be pretty heavy on him, regardless if he starts up front or if he starts as a place differential play. If he starts up front, real chance he runs away, gets laps led. Hard to, to get off that ownership. If he starts in the back of the field, 
there's in my mind, there's like no difference. I think if you're looking to play or not play Bell, you would ideally want him to start up front. Because if he offers place differential, that's just like an unfeasible and unbeatable like PD battle that you have to face between him and whatever driver you go to. So ideally, if you want to not play Bell, you'd probably want him starting first and hoping somebody either can either contend with him or run into yellows. Oh, I mean, let me just type that while I remember them. You'd either want him to um, start up front so somebody could possibly uh, beat him on pit lane, pass him on the track, and et cetera, et cetera. Because if you office place differential, it's going to be really hard to beat him. Uh, and by that point, that's why, like, at least for this race, I'd much rather just wait till the queue and do the show then. Because with 10 guys in the 10K range, projections or point per dollar is going to be pretty huge. Good thing is we have so many guys in the 4K range, so it's very it's probably going to be a stars and scrubs type of line, especially if it's Bell and like a place differential you have to pay up for, or if you have to chase place differential a lot, whether guys like mess up in queue or whatever. Um, but that's very much for like the Saturday. So the thing that I was going to mention really fast is when we look at past races at New Hampshire, some of them go, some of them go green, some of them default to like a you know restarts towards the end and place differential start coming through. I want to note that one thing we're seeing at the short tracks this year, specifically Iowa, specifically Gateway, Richmond, although we had, you know, the last rate or the last um, restart that Hamlin jumps and stuff like that. And even Iowa outside of, uh, who was it? Was it Krause hitting the wall that barely hit the wall and NASCAR threw a yellow? We're seeing these races go green. Okay, which is making it more and more difficult. And I mean, last week could be a bad example because Stenhouse pulled a i'm just gonna stay on old tires and fuck people over and trap people lap down so that by default like made it to where like there's 19 cars in the lead lap in this race because it was in the middle of green flag pit stops but with these races going green okay the field spreads out it's difficult to pass whether you want to be like oh it wasn't difficult to pass at iowa blah blah blah, blah. it was whether it's three or two lanes we're seeing that it's difficult to pass okay that's not the point i'm making um but it goes green, guys are spreading out. We're seeing that both these races have come down to long green flag runs at the end. Makes it really difficult. And yet again, trying to learn from just being out of, hey, maybe I don't want to play as much place differential as I had with, you know, Hamlin and Truex. I mean, those guys went one laps down and stuff. But still, as races go longer, as they stay green longer, it hurts the place differential in the back of the field because why are they starting the back of the field? They either had a bad queue, they're either just kind of slow, um, they have bad pit stall selections, and they have to drive up through the field, okay? Now, if you're somebody fast, like if you're a top-tier team, yet again, could be right, could be wrong. You know, could have just been a, a one-off bad weekend with Trix, but he didn't like the car last week. Hamlin ran into issues. Or it could be a situation of like, oh, you know, Larson starts in the back of the field, he's able to drive through, he's clearly just fast in the field. So, like, you know, when you're looking in at those situations you have to determine what situation it was that kept somebody from being able to pass through the field but typically when races go green that hurts potential place differential plays because there's less especially at a flat track like this to where it's really really hard to pass okay you're having to outbreak guys like what are the passing zones at new hampshire it's entering the corners okay and you got to really shove your way in there you know either i mean these guys are you know basically running the second lane anyway we're not running at the bottom and we're practically diamond in the corner. So it makes it really hard for you to be able to outbreak somebody, get on their inside, and then still clear them off the corner. So it's hard to pass, first and foremost. Um, but if these races are going to end up going green, which at least these two have on the screen, okay, I would probably want to try and be more aggressive on faster guys, on guys starting up front, specifically talking about value as we went with Justin Haley, we talked about Todd Gillen, we talked about uh, some of these guys who are overperforming, or not even overperforming, but are like mid-tier teams, like by default, these are situations where I probably want to play those types of value plays, the value plays that start up front, whereas like you have somebody like LaJoy, who starts like 29th, okay, projecting for 24th, that's not going to give you enough points, whereas you might want to be able, you might want to be more aggressive on taking the risk of the value play and I'm just using Gillen as an example here, but like Gillen starts 19th. I might want to take Gillen just by the fact he has more raw points to start off with and maintaining running position inside the top 20. 
than the than the potential place differential that like somebody like you know Corey LaJoy or somebody like Nemechek or somebody like Zane Smith offers. Um, and with that same thing, this is a race where I might be more interested in playing more of the 8K and 9K guys. Just just speaking out loud of like Bowman, uh, Chastain, Suarez. Like how did Suarez do at Gateway? Fantastic Suarez. Um, but like I mean, even the drop off that Gibbs has had, like this has been pretty, this has been pretty rough, man. Reddick, pretty rough, you know. Whereas like Elliot has been like right, like Elliot, I would probably argue has been the better Hendrick car, you know. And so when you start looking at these guys here, like Elliot, I mean Bowman had a bad time at a uh, at Gateway, but like Elliot Chastain, um, even people like Barry, people like. Chase Briscoe, Keselowski, Busher. Um, it makes it to where if I'm on the outside looking in, I'm like, man, real chance. What if like Truex and them struggle? Might want to be like a balanced type of lineup. You know, people like Byron, people like, or, or yeah, Byron, Blaney, Chase Elliott, Chastain. You know, anyway, those are just kind of my thoughts entering this week. That's kind of where my head is at. Um, as we're still at these short tracks and stuff. Um, I think this race goes green for the most part. We haven't seen as, as much chaos at these short tracks as we have had the intermediates outside of, you know, the guys run out of fuel at Gateway and stuff like that. But even then, like, that wasn't too crazy. I mean, Barry blew a tire. You know, Kyle Busch and Larson wreck each other. But, like, Gateway wasn't that crazy. Iowa, for all the fears, may have been probably me too aggressive on potential tire failures now we had a lot of them but it didn't have the impact in the race that we thought it would didn't have as many yellows as we thought it would so if it goes green i'm thinking i might want to play more guys in the top 25 than chasing a place differential player chasing value and stuff in the back i might want to be chasing that in the mid in the mid pack anyway that's where just my thoughts are at um We'll see how everything looks projection-wise in live shows this weekend. But, yeah, that's where I'm at. Thank you for listening, and I will see you guys in live shows this weekend. Bye-bye.